Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending December 6, 2019. I'm Brian Yadow, and I'm joined today by Russell Investments Senior Portfolio Manager, Megan Roach. Megan? Hi, Brian. Pleasure to have you Good today. Good to see you. So we have a lot of topics to cover today. Yeah. Uh, we've got an update on the U.S. and China trade talks, mm -hmm. as well as several macroeconomic data points that came out this week. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with trade talks. There's a lot sure. of... Uh, uh, financial market sensitivity with the headlines this week. So what were the key uh, developments for the week? Yeah, we've had a couple fits and starts over the last couple of weeks. We, we last left everyone before Thanksgiving. So during the Thanksgiving week, President Trump signed uh, a bill that was in support of the pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. Obviously, that's not something China's thrilled about. Uh, when we came back on Monday, we had some new information that there would be tariffs related to aluminum and steel reinstated uh, from Brazil and Argentina, who are previously exempt from those, as well as some information uh, around some potential tariffs on French imports. And so that got things on, kind of off on a sour note to start the week and to start December. Um, Things troughed a little bit on Tuesday when President Trump uh, kind of gave wind that he may uh, be willing to have the trade negotiations go past uh, the 2020 election. So that was sort of the bottom in, in people's moods around trade for the week. But lo and behold, we've come back in the second half of the week and things, to be, things seem to be back on track, um, both China and the U.S. motivated to reach a trade deal, um, particularly as we have this deadline around December 15th coming up, uh, a week from Sunday, that's when there's a deadline where new trade tariffs would be added to about $156 billion in Chinese goods. Um, people aren't really thrilled about that because a lot of the goods that are targeted are more consumer oriented. So going into the holiday season, having things like laptops and cell phones, video game con consoles impacted by trade wars is, is a concern for folks. Moving on to the macroeconomic data, we've had a lot of data come out this week. We've mm -hmm. had ISM, consumer confidence, and of course, uh, the big non-farm payroll number that came out this morning, yeah. it's a lot for investors to digest. So uh, what would be the key takeaways for you? We've had some pros and cons. I would say this week it's been more on the pros side. Uh, this jobs report this morning was really phenomenal and, and beat almost all expectations at about 266,000 jobs added. Uh, that was relative to expectations of 180,000. That puts our rolling three-month number at over 200,000. That's a very strong number. It's basically double what we would need to keep the unemployment employment rate steady from here. So that's making folks feel really good this morning. Um, we had some other positive news on motor vehicle sales, on consumer sentiment, uh, and then the holiday spending kicked off. So we had Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Those online sales set a record over nearly 20% growth from 2018. So that's all been on the positive side of the ledger. On not bad, but not great. Um, we had ISM manufacturing and non-manufacturing indexes come out in the U.S. Uh, on the manufacturing side, we remain at that under 50 level. That's more of a contractionary indicator um, for the manufacturing activity. The result in November was lower than expectations, lower than last month. Um, additionally, in the Eurozone, final PMIs came out. Those numbers also in the Eurozone and U.K. remain in contractionary territories, but uh, have improved in the Eurozone relative to last month. The brighter spot on that that ISM data was on the non-manufacturing side. The services index remains above 50. It didn't quite meet expectations this month, but it's still a healthy number. So as we've talked in Market Week and Review over a number of periods now, there really is this feedback loop that can occur, and it can either happen in kind of a virtuous cycle or a vicious cycle. As we've got uncertainty on trade, it can impact CEO confidence. That feeds through to capital expenditure and hiring intentions. That feeds through to unemployment and wages, and eventually the consumer will be impacted, either positively or negatively. And as we go into 2019, how the consumer spends on autos and housing and retail goods will be important because it's going to impact earnings growth. We've had a period of, of weakness in terms of corporate earnings growth over 2019, and so seeing an improvement in 2020 is going to be pretty important. How did this all play out in the financial markets this week, and what impact does it have on the overall economic outlook? So as we've seen, you know, for a period of time now, the markets are pretty twitchy to these day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week changes in trade rhetoric. Um, as we were kind of on a sour note on Monday and Tuesday, global equity markets pulled back by a little over 2 percent. Treasury yields fell by about 10 basis points. But we've come back in in the back half of the week, and things have recovered quite nicely. We're basically back to points above where we were when we last left everyone before Thanksgiving. So um, the markets are feeling pretty good about that. 
Well, before we wrap things up, uh, what would be some of the key takeaways for investors this week and what should investors be looking forward to next week? So I think three key takeaways. Um, for the trade deal, our belief is that the U.S. and China both remain pretty motivated to reach this phase one deal um, ahead of the December 15th deadline. On the economic data, the theme of 2019 has continued to be more strength on the consumer side relative to corporate, more strength on the services relative to manufacturing. So we'll be looking for changes in that, but the data this week has supported those themes. Uh, and then lastly, in terms of corporate earnings growth uh, going into 2019 and the impact on equity markets, despite all of this volatility around trade wars, global equity investors have been handsomely rewarded for their investment this year. Markets up uh, year to date over 20 percent. So things have been going really well, but because not a lot of that has been driven by corporate earnings growth, it means a lot of it's come from multiple expansion. And so seeing continued strength in the consumer is going to be important to seeing earnings growth improve in 2020 and kind of support the multiples that are in the market today. In terms of main attractions for next week, uh, Wednesday we have the Fed meeting uh, and the press conference coming. Our expectation is that we will now enter a period of a prolonged pause in terms of changes to the Federal Reserve rate. Um, we had three cuts in July and September and October. We think there's a pretty high hurdle for any additional action from here on out for the foreseeable future. If we had to say one way or the other, I think we're leaning more toward a cut in 2020 than a hike, but we'll be looking, keeping a close eye on the tone and the economic projections that come from next week's meeting. And then lastly, on Thursday in the United Kingdom, there's a snap general election that was caused by this impasse that's been reached on Brexit. So the results of that will help provide a clear path, probably not crystal clear, but a clear path in terms of how the negotiations between the UK and the EU go from here. Great. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for today, Megan. But as always, thank, thank you, you for your insights. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Market Week in Review. Hi, I'm Eric Ristaman, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.